you haven't sort of landed on a palette and never changed it. You know, some designers work in fabrics in beautiful subtle colors all their lives. It sounds like you shift from palette to palette very easily depending on the project or the director or the inspiration. Yeah, I don't think I do have a specific palette. I do, however, think that I have a lot of, I like, there are certain things I like. like and what? I don't, um, I, you know, I have sort of little idiosyncratic things. I like squares as opposed to circles. Um, so there are a lot of, squares I like to sort of I don't know I mean I just have this sort of thing and if you kind of do if you look back through the design, there are quite a lot of straight lines um, so that does you know it's just this you know it's, I, I don't approach a design thinking well oh, I'm gonna make it square I I just I'm I can be drawn to that you know I have made curves in designs uh, yes you push the floor down and it went like I that <laughs> Push the floor down and, and like, like that. that. I like that. And 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 um, no, and I have I've made soft things and hard things and all sorts of things. But um, I mean, I like to think that the design comes out of the piece. But I, if I'm honest with myself, there are certain things that I do, certain shapes that I'm drawn to, um, and maybe that there's some sort of deep dark psychological reason why I like those shapes, but... Um, well, but I'm immediately looking, looking at the shape of this room, I'm looking at the bookshelves, I'm looking at the ladder you behind the you, squares. I'm looking at the square windows, I'm looking at, at the rectangular tables, yeah. I don't see a round table. No, um, it's not a round table around. Um, <laughs> but, but also, I'm, um, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, I've always been interested in the golden mean, which is this... Um, um, it's a kind of set of rules for a very sort of pleasing <laughs> rectangle um, for the eye. I, I don't think I work within that. I don't, I don't actually sit down and kind of figure out whether things actually work within the golden mean, but I've always been attracted to those proportions. Um, um, and where do so you I do think that I think you're drawn in certain kind of aesthetic directions, but um, Sometimes it's quite nice to resist them and push yourself to move in a different direction. And that's why, in a way, for me, the collaborative experience is so essential because otherwise you would just keep doing the same thing because, you know, um, you have a tendency to like certain things. Um, and in fact, when I have very strong collaborations with directors or the other people that I'm working with, it really does make me move in different directions uh, where I'm sort of taken aback by or I'm trying to react to someone else's point of view on a production um, and um, so that's quite it's quite nice to have to have that to have a strong and where do you go for refreshment so to speak do you go to the art gallery do you, do you go to other people's shows do you listen to music or um, nothing. You read. Uh, you watch the Hallmark Channel at home. I, <laughs> I watch the Hallmark Channel. Um, yeah, I, w I stare blankly out the window. Um, no, I. I um, everywhere, you know, like everyone else now. I mean, it, it's it's interesting because, in the old days, I would go to the gallery and I would go to the, to the library and do research and. Um, and um, yeah, and you see lots of other work. I try to see as much work as like other people's work, theater work and dance and film and and you get a lot of you know you get a lot of influence from that. Um, and you know, and now on the internet, all you have to do is put a little thing in, and a thousand images come up, and it's very inspiring. Um, um, do you spend a lot of time on the internet? Well, I. I find it an incredibly useful tool, yes, because I, way? you know, well, I mean, ten. It's completely transformed the way I work. Um, because ten and fifteen years ago, I would have, um, with, with this process that we did, was you know, it was modern then, but it was. I look back now, I feel like I was working in a Victorian period. It was, 
you know, I would draft on paper with this kind of funny ruler that goes back and forth and then a, a set square that goes back and forth that way. And you'd sharpen your pencils, shung, 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 in this thing. <laughs> and then you'd have to dip it into another little thing to wipe off all the little, the, what do you call it, the little stuff that was on the end of the pencil. And you make your beautiful line. And then you move your thing up and you're going to make another, another line. So if you want a thicker line, you made six lines. And if you wanted a thin line, you made one line. And then you would do another one this way. And I mean, it was incredible. There was something so satisfying about drafting because you had these beautiful papers which all had beautiful lines all over them. And That's like editing film with, uh, you know, the Steenbeck and the scissors and the yeah. celluloid and the tape and yeah, the next four frames and cut it and exactly. celluloid it. It was a very, as, as you're describing, but that's all gone. It's all in film, very physical. You had kind of the physical. There was also a difference uh, in that you had a different approach to what, how you because you, you saw the drawings in your head, so you would map the drawings out, whoa, with a kind of series of rough drawings, and then you would kind of map it out in your head as well, and then you would do your drawings. And there was a whole ritual around the drawing. There was a cleaning, and there was a lot of clean, there was a lot of cleaning involved with drafting and making sure, because the paper had to be very clean. And so, and you know, there was always a moment where you'd spill something or you'd uh, mess it up. And, there was always there was quite a lot to do with keeping the paper clean, um, which you're you know thinking about at the same time as you know trying to think about the design. Um, so that's what you did, and then if you wanted to build a model from that, you had to run to the copy store, get a copy of things. Then you'd build the which wasn't quite accurate the copy because it was slightly out of scale, and you'd build the model, and then you would come back, and then you would change the thing, and then you would build the thing, and so. Now you have this fantastic thing, which is drafting on a computer. So you do it all on the computer, and it's all like turn it, or you do like it's it's like a word processing, but in drawing. So you you know make a line. You think oh no, it's smaller, no, thicker. Everything gets stretched and moved around, and then you kind of like and then the only thing that's strange about it, I have to say, is is you know with drafting on paper, you saw the big picture all the time. With drafting on a computer, what you're doing is you're sort of doing this weird right. thing, and then you whoa, we're going to look at it close, and we're going to come back, and so all day long you're kind of like doing this strange point of view, which is quite hard to. You have to always, I find, you have to kind of rem keep contact with it because if you forget your pathway, it's very hard to sometimes remember your pathway. Um, but ultimately, you get. You can you can make very beautiful drawings on the computer, um, and then you, in a button, you send them and they're overseas. Um, and has it helped? Because it's yeah. the same debate again is in editing. Mm -hmm. That editing now on a computer, editing film or something is so fast, click 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 mm -hmm. click 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 click, that some people say by taking the physicality out of it and taking the time out of it, mm -hmm. it has actually made it a little more superficial. I don't know, but that's the debate. I don't know. I really like it. I like. I like the process because it's something that I feel is, is made it made something that I felt was very stiff, um, very fluid. Right. Um, so you have just the ability to change, um, uh, and you can adapt. If I just feel like I'm much more flexible, and I don't feel as precious with my drawings as I used to, um, because you can change them. You know, it's very easy to change. You know, in fact, I can redo a whole drawing in a day now. Um, just because you're, and then you just press a button, prints, um, and then you send it overseas. They can have a look at it and they can see whether it's good. They can make adjustments to your drawing over there. They send it back to you in the same day. I mean, that's an incredible technology which wasn't available to us 15 years ago. Um, you know, there was this thing where you, you know, do the drawings, you make sure that you don't get any dirt on the paper, and then you would send them off to be printed. And you'd keep the originals because the originals are like, <laughs> if they go... The Bible. It, yeah, the production just, you know, goes. You know, if somebody drops water onto your drawings, you know, the productions, you have to start again. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then you would send them off by FedEx and they would arrive there a day later and then they would call you on the telephone or send you a fax or something. And, 
about the changes that need to be made, and then you Isn't would that sort of romantic, that kind of setting by, <laughs> by like, it's like movie theaters, instead of the, right. you know, the great cans of celluloid coming to movie theaters and being deposited and brought up to the large projectors, soon it's going to be uh, right. download, uh, project. Yeah. And there's a kind of romanticism in the great cans of celluloid arriving and the, yeah. the FedEx delivering the drawings. Well, maybe there's a sort of romanticism in you know your your part in the process, but I don't think ultimately in what's <laughs> what I do on stage it's any better. I think it's actually maybe better what I do now on stage because I just have more flexibility and I'm less willing to hold on to. You know, sometimes I think our big the big uh, the big issue with a lot of designers is that it's very difficult. I mean, the the job physically is so old fashioned. You're building models and you're doing these drawings and um, you're that in fact it's very easy to sort of fall in love with the work you're what you've made you know so you make something in a model and you think it's very easy you know you make a little model people love the things because they're like little dolls houses and and you fall in love with them as well so it's very difficult for you to change those things um, and I think one of you know, sort of, I feel like a sort of tool, a key tool for a designer is to uh, not become too precious about the work um, so that you can um, allow it to grow. 